Great, so we've hit 11.16 now. So good morning, everybody, and welcome to the fifth Meet Britain's Makers event for the Made Futures virtual uh, exhibition week. Um, so from the 22nd to the 26th of March, we've been hosting two events a day, the first a masterclass and the second a panel discussion, all aimed at offering advice to job seekers with the help of real life industry leaders. You can now watch all of these events uh, via our YouTube channel. And all you need to do is click the playlist Made Futures 2021. And remember, if you attend two of these events or watch the events back and fill the questionnaires in, you will receive an employability certificate. So definitely get that done. because It's a great thing to mention on your CV. So today we have a star studded lineup of manufacturers and training providers from the East and Europe. East Yorkshire and North Yorkshire region. Uh, we have representatives from companies such as Unison, Additive X and Porter Cabin. And in a moment, we'll introduce our panelists. But first of all, I just wanted um, to mention the Made Futures virtual exhibition. So today is the last day you can view stands and look at the jobs available and also interact with team members from those businesses. And this is a really unique opportunity. So make sure today you're looking around stands and um, interacting with the, the job seekers there uh, at the event. So um, yeah. right now I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you a short video of how you can look around those stands at the exhibition. And like I say, today is the last day uh, for you to log in and look around the stands. So yeah. What I will do now is share that video with you all. And if you do have any problems logging into the exhibition, by the way, guys, you can uh, email events at maidengroup.com and events at maidengroup.com will get back to you uh, with any login details that you're missing out on. So I'll just play that video now. Hi, I'm Charles Addison, Managing Director of Made in the Midlands and Made in Yorkshire. And thanks very much for registering and attending the uh, Made Futures Virtual Careers Week. The session you're on at the moment will be one of the breakout events in the regions where you'll get a chance to listen into some of the employers in your area who are taking people on, uh, understand why career in manufacturing engineering is a great one, and the opportunity to sit in breakout rooms and network work with them afterwards. There are one, um, so there's one event each day like this, so I encourage you to register for the ones that are relevant to your geography, but definitely check out the wider elements of the Made Futures Careers Week because the actual uh, virtual exhibition hall is the key part of this in terms of being able to contact and uh, speak with the other employers. You'll do so by visiting madefutures.com and clicking the login button in the bottom hand of the corner uh, where you put in the email address and password that we've sent you, um, and which will give you access to the virtual careers uh, hall itself and the lobby area. Click visit the expo, and that opens up the live exhibition hall. So quickly navigating around the skills hall is going to give you some exhibition standards from the local uh, skills providers in your area through apprenticeships to colleges and universities. The Made Futures book is a downloadable 120 page book as a prospectus of all the firms who are engaged in this, in this event. Feel free to contact and engage with my colleagues on the Made uh, help desk in terms of the live chat and jobs board takes you back to where we've just come from, Made Futures. Um, jobs board. The careers hall is the really the key takeaway part of this exhibition. I encourage you to go and visit the stands after this call, especially the ones who are on your panel, because this is where they will direct you to. So you can search by sector, by accreditation, by what a company buys and sells, and you can scroll through employees um, accordingly. My advice is to click on as many as you can and interact with them, because all of these businesses are hiring at the moment. So we can load up the exhibition standards as follows. Uh, we can interact and understand what the company does and watch the personal greeting of the, of the managing director and understand more about the business. We can download maybe a brochure um, and some stuff about here about looking for application engineers to join the team. So you actually have job descriptions. And then to engage with the person on the stand, simply click the live chat and you can say something like, hi, Joanna, I am interested in a career with your business. Joanna will then get this through as a live notification and can chat with you real time. Or if she's on uh, an additional chat, she'll get a notification of the message and she has your contact information. Crucially, visit as many stands as you can because each of the exhibitors will get a report of the job seekers who have attended them. And I've seen most of them have been emailing out to people asking for further information and contacting job seekers themselves. So it's an excellent way 
to progress through. We'll be providing a certificate signed by Lord Whitby of your participation. So I'd encourage you to achieve one of the deliverables on this, which is visiting the different exhibition uh, stands themselves. And also each day there is a special competition where we are hiding a golden banner on one of the exhibition uh, stands in the hall. And it's your job to kind of report to us through social media where the golden banner is on that particular day and to contact us. Um, as I said, all of these firms are hiring and the key people for each business are available in the live chat forum. So please make sure you make use of your time this week. When you're going to go through uh, to the fringe events, social events with the panelists, also make sure your video and audio is on because at the end of the day, this is an opportunity for you to speak and interact with company owners. And it's a lot harder to do that if they can't see who you are, where you are. So use your week productively, be as visible as you can and make the most of this opportunity to speak to employees. Thank you very much for supporting and thank you very much for our panelists for speaking at this exhibition as well. So like I said, everybody, if you do have any problems with logging in, please email events at madeingroup.com. And as Charlie mentioned there, make sure you're looking at the panelists' stands today. Uh, continue that, that rapport and relationship that you build with them in the networking sessions later on in this session. So I'd just like to go through the agenda for today. So first of all, we'll hear from our panelists. They'll introduce themselves. And then after that, we'll go to some questions um, so that you can get some advice from, from the panelists on, on the event today. And make sure you're taking notes throughout that part. Um, this is, like I said, it's a really unique opportunity to, for you to hear from key figures within the industry. After that, we'll then go to um, a series of breakout rooms where you'll have the opportunity to speak with the panelists here today uh, a little bit more personally and, and um, build those relationships that we were just talking about. So um, I won't keep you any longer and we'll get started with today's event. So uh, first of all, I would like to pass over to the panelists to introduce themselves. So Joe, please introduce yourself and your business here today. Hi, so I'm Joe Young, Managing Director of Additive Exhibited. The company has been in Yorkshire for more than 30 years, but we started as a printer repair and spare parts company. And then since 2014, we took a new direction, which was 3D printing or additive manufacturing. So I've worked here my whole career, every area of the business, and now a managing director. And my job's now strategy, culture, people, and process. We're based on a lovely site in Ripon, purpose-built um, building, big, there's only 32 of us here at the moment, but we're filling it up with 3D printers. And our mission is to be the UK's number one for additive manufacturing technology solutions, whether it's for prototyping all the way through to production. We've got customers all over the UK and Ireland, many sectors, lots of different types of manufacturing, uh, but also things like education, research, healthcare, all the customers have in common a real innovative approach to manufacturing, wanting to use this new and accessible technology to make things quicker or make things cheaper or new materials or maybe in new places. So it's really cool to be involved with because um, additives having a big impact on the world. So in a normal year, we'd be at trade shows up and down the country exhibiting and demonstrating our machines, but not this year. We're trying to be digital. So you can head over to Made Futures and we've got a virtual stand and you can actually chat to someone who works for me. Thank you. Great, thank you for that, Joe, and thank you for joining us today. And uh, Nick, please introduce yourself. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Nick Vernon and I head up the learning and development team here at Porter Cabin. Uh, we're a market leader in the design, manufacture and installation of modular buildings in the UK, France, Ireland, Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg. Uh, my role mainly is about ensuring that our colleagues a, remain compliant in the job that they do and providing them with the skills that they need to do that job. But it's also about developing our colleagues for future roles as well. And obviously that's where you come in. I've worked in learning and development for over 20 years now. I know I don't look old enough, but I have um, in retail, fast moving consumer goods and manufacturing. And the best thing about my job is for me, it's about seeing those light bulb moments when I've coached, mentored or developed a colleague. So thanks so much, Jasmine, for having me. No problem at all. Thanks for joining us, Nick. And finally, uh, Alan, please introduce yourself. Oh, sorry, Alan, I think you're on mute. Sorry, I thought that was you. 
unmuting me. Right, okay. <laughs> I think I'm live. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Alan Pickering, um, Joint Managing Director at Unison Limited in Scarborough. I'm responsible for the technical and sales aspects of what we do. Uh, Unison has been going for almost 50 years. Uh, we design and build special purpose machinery with a particular specialis specialism in uh, tube bending machines. Like I say, we're based in Scarborough, North Yorkshire on the coast. Um, we patented the all-electric tube bending machine in 1994 of the record for the largest all-electric vending machine in the world. Our customer base is, is global. We look, work for some of the largest manufacturers in the world, including Boeing, Airbus, BAE, Rolls-Royce, etc., and specialise in the most difficult materials to bend, such as titanium and inkhorn. Our competition is equally global, uh, increasingly from low-cost economies, um, and our constant challenge is trying to get customers to understand and appreciate true value, the bigger picture, of the importance of UK manufacturing. We, we strongly believe in inspiring and educating the younger generation and have, have run Scarborough Science and Engineering Week for the last 10 years, uh, as well as being the founders of Scarborough UTC. Uh, feel free to come and see us on our stand. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for that, Alan. And for anybody that attended the Future of Work in Manufacturing Masterclass, you may have recognised Alan uh, there as well. So thanks for joining us again, Alan, today. And um, Whilst I'm thanking the panellists here, I'd also like to thank you guys for joining us and um, to all of our manufacturing members who have joined us today as well to support the job seekers who will also be in the networking room. So, um, you know, speak to as many people as possible, especially the key figures and other manufacturing members who are here today as well. So thank you all for joining us. Um, so I'd like to get straight into the questions now. And, and my first question is for Alan. And Alan, what do you think is the best way for a job seeker to approach an employer if they're interested in a role? Um, it's, it's a little tricky at the moment with COVID, um, so I guess the traditional route of CVs um, is, is the best way as it stands today. Normally we would have uh, open days and things like that for people to come around and have a look at what, what we're doing. Um, if you're going to send a CV in, make sure it's, it's interesting, make sure it's full of uh, information about who you are as a person, not just your skills. Um, we're all about attitude in our business. The people with the right attitude, um, we will we will take on. Um, so, tell us about your passions. Um, show the things that you do that are over and above um, your day to day life, such as um, maybe some volunteering work or things that show teamwork, um, communication skills, and determination. Really. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's a really, really important thing to mention is to mention the things that, you know, you might not think may be great on a CV, but, you know, the things that, that show that you have communication skills and that you're enthusiastic about the sector is really important. So that's some great advice. Thanks, Alan. Um, so I, Jasmine, can I just add to that? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, would, I would totally say don't bother sending me a CV unless you send a letter with it. Um, yeah, I, I still cannot believe how many people just send out a CV and it would take... 10 minutes, 15 minutes to write. It only has to be short, but something that shows me that you know you're applying to my business and I, I get that across it makes a huge difference. Yeah, definitely. And that was my next question, actually, Joe. I, I wanted to ask, uh, how can an applicant stand out from the hundreds of, of CVs? So other than having that cover letter showing that, you know, that the applicant is aware of, of your business and is showing interest in, in who you are, um, what else can they do to stand out from those hundreds of CVs that you might receive? Well, honestly, it's not as hard as you might think, because I'm... It's not normally for me about looking for reasons to keep them in the consider pile. It's more about the things that make me dismiss them. You see what I mean? So yeah. it, it's just the, you know, like I said, the letter. And, and it's so obvious when, when you haven't slightly tweaked your CV because of the job that you're applying for. And it only needs to be slight tweaks. Um, yeah, and, and then just don't make mistakes. Make, making mistakes in your letter and stuff. I mean, if you're making that kind of mistake at the beginning of your career with me, what are you gonna do when you're working for me? You've gotta have some attention to detail. So maybe I'm a, a bit of a stickler. Um, other ways to stand out, I don't, I don't know. I think you can approach us in different ways. You can check us out on social media. You could connect that way. LinkedIn for me, there's, there's too much. I get too many messages and I tend to ignore them. But it probably is a good idea to look for people who work for the organization and, and connect with them. Um, 
yeah. yeah, I don't know if any other panelists has got a, yeah, any definitely. good ideas. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, Nick would be a great person to answer this as well. So, Nick, if you have anything to add as a... Yeah, little, I mean, Joe, Joe's, Joe's hit the nail on the head, write a letter. There's nothing worse than just getting a CV because you don't feel as if the applicants took any time other than just sending you a CV. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's also about reading the job advert and tailoring yeah. your CV to that job because the amount of CVs we get here at Porter Cabin that are generic CVs and you look, kind of read the CV and think, well, that doesn't even match the job that you're applying for. So just take a little bit of time and read the job advert, print it out, get a highlighter pen and highlight your CV co that corresponds to the job ad that you're actually applying for, because that way you'll know that your CV matches to that particular job. The other thing as well is once you apply, CV. because loads of people now use LinkedIn, they use re recruitment companies are kind of a dying breed now because most companies do their own resourcing now. And one of the top tips is once you've sent your application in, it's very rare to hear back from a company now unless you are chosen to go through to interview. But don't be shy. Send them an email. Most companies' HR and resourcing email addresses are hr at portercabin.com or resourcing at portercabin.com. The likelihood of them being something different is really, really different, is really unusual. So don't be afraid to follow up that application with a, with a polite email to say, just wanted to confirm that you've received my email because that shows me that you've got some something about you. You've got some oomph about you and you're actually doing something proactive. So that, that's, that's all I could add, really. Yeah, that's awesome. and that's a great tip as well, Nick. Um, you know, the, the email address, so email and HR at the business's name. That's, that's something you could do to stand out. So what I asked, uh, what I asked Joe earlier in terms of what can you do to make your CV stand out? That's another way that you can stand out by by dropping them an email, showing you're enthusiastic and that you know you're you're really eager to, to work for the business, to be part of to be part of the team. So thanks for that, Nick. Um, and in addition to that. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Nick, what skills do you believe the industry is looking for, particularly within the sector for today? Yeah, so obviously we make we make buildings. So as well as looking at for the obvious skills of like being a tradesman or a or a manager, we also look for colleagues who can work in a, in a very challenging environment. And and one of the things we we're a very successful business. We've, we're in our ninth year of continual growth. So everything we do, we don't stand still for long. We're very very busy. We are some would say we haven't got enough people in the business to do the job we have but that's great because it means that we're all very very busy but we need colleagues that are resilient so if you've got any evidence of resilience of, of in previous jobs or colleges or schools that's a real real good key thing that we're looking for but we're also looking for people that have, that have got are not afraid to share their views on things so we really welcome people to come in and say have we thought about doing this different and it's and there's it's the way you do that that makes you stand out and um, but also for me it's making sure that our people there's an appetite for them to grow most people in and most people come to work to do a job to go home and get paid I'm looking when we recruit people, I'm looking for people that have got that something about them that makes me think, actually, I want to take a chance on you. Um, but the, also, the ultimate thing is because of everything we do here at Porter Cabin, it's a very, very team based environment. So being able to demonstrate how you work in a team and how you get on with people in a team is really, really key. Yeah, definitely. And um, um, Joe, uh, how about you, you know, particularly uh, within additive uh, manufacturing, um, what skills do you believe are sort of missing within the sector at the moment? Um, so for us, we, we don't exclusively think you need to be like an engineering graduate, um, but it would probably help, but not necessarily at graduate level, but you're looking for someone, I'm looking for like creating, mating, making and fixing skills. In practical terms, like CAD skills are great. That's what we're we're missing uh, across in the additive manufacturing sector. Um, but there's people who can teach themselves pretty quickly. So one of my hires was a an apprentice who literally taught himself Fusion 360, um, and he's very good at it. So I think it is that attitude to learning and development. And yeah, it doesn't have to be maybe like the formal qualifications that you would expect. Um, we're open to looking at um capabilities i suppose and, and 3d printing so not many people have really got experience with it before but it's not essential and some people have got it as a hobby which is great if someone's interested in it i mean i would say not just if you wanted to work for a company like ours but for most manufacturing businesses now 
I think you could stand out by saying, actually, I'm interested in 3D printing. Um, I've, got, I've had a go at printing some stuff. I, I know what it's about. I've been online, used some of the free software to design things. You know, just, just even a really basic level, but to understand the concepts behind it. Yeah, and, and you mentioned there that one of your apprentices or, or one of your, your employees, uh, they, they taught themselves. And what did they do to do that? How did they teach themselves? Literally online courses. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and then using it a bit at work and then doing a bit more um, online course and then um, yeah. using it again at work and just, yeah, after a, probably two years because it wasn't solid, um, now they're really good at it. Yeah, and that's, and that's some really good advice, you know, make your own learning if, if you're not a college or university and you're just a, and you're a job seeker, you can go online and learn those things yourself, kind of like... Um, Joe's employee there. So thank you for that, Joe. Um, so my next uh, question is for Alan, if that's okay. And Alan, I'd like to ask, um, how can people break into the industry to, de to develop a career in manufacturing? Uh, just thinking about um, those online courses that we just discussed a moment ago as well. Um, I'd say don't be afraid of apprenticeships. Yeah. You, know, you don't have to be 16 to do an apprenticeship. There's plenty of uh, senior people that go on, to, on apprenticeship courses. We've got several members of staff that have gone on to get their degrees alongside their apprenticeship. And, you know, frankly, some of those people are, are way better than the ones that come straight out of university. So to do your practical skills alongside your education is a fantastic model. And, you know, racking up those huge debts from university, I'm not sure I'd do it if, if I have my time again. I think I'll, I'll go down the apprenticeship route. Um, learn tools that are sp specific for you. For your industry, They're like like Joe and Nick were saying, there's endless tutorials on on YouTube for things that you're interested in, um, and make sure you become a ninja in, in program programs such as Microsoft Excel. It's such a crucial tool in being able to analyze and, and present information that, that, that will enable you to get across your ideas and make sure your the information that you have is understood by colleagues. Um, stay abreast of the the latest technology, but always view it with a level of scepticism. Don't see it as a panacea. Listen to those that have got experience and don't be afraid to challenge and make suggestions. Um, I think someone else was, was saying a, a, about that uh, sort of can-do attitude. You know, suggest ideas, but, but be, be good listeners as well as good, good, good talkers. You know, we want people to listen, analyze, and research and then come to us with ideas and offer suggestions. That's what we're looking for in a business. We can't afford to stand still. It's a globally competitive world. We've just taken on our first 3D printer, Joe, and it, <laughs> and it, and it runs 24 seven. And the, the, the team are just buzzing with, with what you can do with it. And people are just going around our machines and photographing and going, we could 3D print that, we could 3D print that. And the cost savings to us as a business are huge. Okay, it's slow and painful to watch. <laughs> you know, some of our prints take, you know, two days, but when they come out at the end, it's like, wow, you know, that thing was, that thing cost us 500 pounds before the machine. Yeah. We, we printed that over, uh, over the weekend and nobody was there. We have cameras on it. So, you know, I, I definitely look at 3D technology, 3D printing and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's going to be booming, especially as it gets more and more into the metal side. Um, because that's predominantly what, what we do. We, we cut metal. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's, and that's a good piece of advice, you know, to take away. Uh, Yasmin, could I just say something on that one as well, if you don't mind? Yeah, yeah, because just reiterating what Alan said about apprenticeships, we, apprenticeships are not what they used to be. They are they have totally changed the workplace now. We're recruiting 20 apprentices this year. Uh, to come and work with us in a variety of roles. So apprentices, when I was leaving school and college, were painter, joiner, electrician. We are we're taking on a quantitative quantity. I can't even say it. I'm excited. A quantity <laughs> surveyor this year as an apprentice, which is absolutely fantastic. And we're looking at chartered management degrees through apprenticeships. So it is really they are not what they used to be. And the best thing with it, as Alan says, you get paid to learn. So you, do, you, you come out of it with a, with a decent qualification. And if you're committed during that apprenticeship, we, we, over the course of the last seven years at Porter Cabin, we've took on over a hundred apprentices and we have never, ever let one of them go. 
So, so I really would encourage that apprenticeship route without a doubt. So that twenty percent of our workforce are either apprentices or ex-apprentices. Yeah, yeah. They are like gold for us. Yeah, as a yeah. Well, there you go. You heard it straight from the employer's mouth, guys. Uh, it's like two birds with one stone, isn't it? That whole saying, you know, you're getting your qualification and you're getting earning money yeah. all at the same time. And, and that qualification, you know, will take you wherever within your career yeah. as well. So Alan, def- Alan said it, that if, if I had my time again, I would not hesitate in doing an apprenticeship yeah. without a doubt, without a doubt. And of course, everybody here today um, must be uh, interested and passionate about the manufacturing sector uh, to sit here and um, you know be part of today's event. So, Nick, I wanted to ask you, why do you believe manufacturing makes for a good career? With the right company, manufacturing can be a job for life. Um, I mean, there was there was all, it always used to be in the olden days that yeah you got a job for life well at porter cabin you you really do can get a job for life we've got people here that came to us when they left school and they're going to be retiring in five years time so i think if you find the right business and you have the right attitudes i think for me if you find a job that you enjoy and you're passionate about it you can have a job for life it's it's literally i I know it's an old-fashioned saying but it is still possible to find a business that, that really, really does do it. So for me, the, the manufacturing is, is one of those jobs that even with robots, I mean, we have literally, Porter Cabins, are, I, would, I would say it's a traditional business. We, we haven't really changed the design of what we do for the last 60 years. However, this year we've opened a new factory and we've got robot welders and robot sprayers in there because we've, we've, we've been innovative in what we do. Yeah. So it's not just a job of, you don't need to know how to cut a piece of metal anymore. You need to know how to program a computer that, yeah. ru- that runs a, a robot welding arm. So, so it's not just traditional manufacturing. As, as obviously Joe's testament to this, manufacturing is changing faster than ever before. Has coronavirus helped that? Probably has because it's forced us to do things that we probably yeah, didn't definitely. do before. This yeah. is an example. We would have never done this a year ago. So, uh, so manufacturing is one of those careers now that's not just traditional manufacturing. There's so much more you can do. Yeah, most definitely. And, and what say you, Joe? Um, why do you believe manufacturing makes for a good career? Just thinking about what Nick was saying and, and about the you know, array of opportunities within manufacturing in addition to that, you know, not just in engineering, but in all the other aspects and other departments that comes with manufacturing. Exactly. Yeah, it's huge and diverse. And yeah, there's going to be marketing jobs, there's going to be sales jobs, there's going to be everything else that a business needs. It's a business at the end of the day. But I think, and, and I agree with Nick, I think next five to 10 years, massive change is going to be really exciting in UK manufacturing. I also think maybe a sense of purpose. I think it, people like a purpose to what they do and their job, not just going into work every day. And the idea that you're producing something and you're trying to beat the competition and you want to do it faster or you want to do it cheaper. Um, and maybe in some cases improve lives with whatever it is that's produced. I think, I think it gives people a purpose. That's why I think it's great to work in. Yeah, definitely. And, and again, this is something that's been mentioned throughout all of these events. It's, it's materialization that you get to see of uh, what your hard work goes towards. And you can see it making a difference, whether it be in the automotive sector, uh, you know, the ventilator challenge that took place last year. You can see where your work goes towards. It's a really, really key part of being part of manufacturing. So um, thank you to the panelists today for answering those questions. Um, some really great advice there, and I hope you found some, some value in that, everybody. Um, now we will go to the breakout rooms. So um, our panelists here will reintroduce themselves. I'll let you know who they are uh, again in the breakout rooms. And then they would then go around the room, give you the opportunity to introduce yourselves. Um, and that includes uh, the members of the group as well. So um, introduce yourselves to the, to the job seekers, let them know who, who you are and uh, your business. So uh, my colleague, Annetta, in the background here today, she will put you all into the breakout rooms and all you will need to do is a, press accept to go into that breakout rooms. Um, we, we're going until quarter past 12. So um, you'll have the opportunity to speak to all of the panelists here today. So uh, make sure you have your camera on, make sure you're taking notes and have yourself prepared uh, for the questions that they may ask you. So um, thank you very much for, for listening today and to the panelists for taking part and good luck in the breakout rooms. Be back here soon.
Hi everybody, welcome back to the main event. Just got a few more seconds, we'll let everybody get back in from the uh, networking sessions, but I hope you, you enjoyed that and you got the chance to learn a bit more about the panelists and they, they about you, so. So thank you for joining us today on Meet Britain's Makers virtual networking event for the East and North Yorkshire. Like I just said, I really hope you found some value in today's event. And um, as the exhibition is still running today, make sure that you're heading over to the stands at the virtual exhibition, especially the Port Academy, Additive X and Unison from our panelists here today. Um, we're still doing the Golden Banner competition as well. So make sure you're looking around the stands and you find the Golden Banner so you can win that Moleskine Smart Book or bottle of wine. So as I mentioned, make sure that you post this onto your social posts once you find it and use the hashtags, hashtag made futures and hashtag 1K jobs challenge so you can win that Moleskine Smart Book or the bottle of wine. So um, I'd like to thank again to all our panelists for joining us today, to Joe, Nick and to Alan and um, to all of you guys for joining us and taking part in this event. It's been a really great week and we just have one more event left today for South Yorkshire at 2.30 p.m. Um, thank you to all of the members who joined us as well to support the job seekers and hopefully I'll see you later today at 2.30 for South Yorkshire. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. What time?